Welcome back to the program. Now the Youth Olympics are currently underway in Singapore. Many of the young athletes have been capturing our attention with their can-do spirit. Well, one of the greatest fears for any professional athlete is the fact that should an injury occur, it could mean the end of their career. So you know what, I went for a sneak peek behind the scenes at the Singapore Sports Institute and there they've got a special recovery and training center that caters to all Singapore athletes. Take a look. Here we are at the Singapore Sports Institute and in fact in this room behind me is where some of Singapore's young athletes come for treatment and also get a bit of a workout. We want to find out what's behind the wall. So I have Dr. Cormack, the medical director. Welcome Stephen. You're going to be my guide? Yes. Let's, okay, let's go. let's go take a look. Alright, so Cormack, what, what's, what's this area about? Uh, this big open plan area that you see here is actually the uh, support services for the Singapore Sports Institute. So the Sports Institute, as it's called now, has been in existence for over 30 years. It was the old Sports Council, Sports Medicine Centre, and it is a pretty much a one-stop shop for our national athletes. Between training, testing, monitoring, and actually recovery from injuries, this is where they come for their treatment uh, and for their support to allow them to compete at an international level. Okay, well I'm going to jump in here because I see this young lady strapped up. Uh, what's happening here? Uh, this is just one of many machines that we use um, uh -huh. to monitor and to test our athletes. So she is a year yesterday post-surgery and this is hopefully her last test before we say scientifically, medically, we're quite happy for you to return to your sport and compete next year at the World Championships. This isokinetic machine tests the maximum strength of her good knee versus her recovering knee. If the newly recovered knee does not match up to her good knee, they'll give her more rehab to help her get back on track. That's it. Let's go. Last five. Give it a One and stop. All right, now in this area, it, uh, it pretty much looks like a regular gym to some extent. Uh, in some ways, but it's a very modifiable area. Um, during the day, predominantly, we have a lot of rehab athletes in here undergoing their, their morning and afternoon sessions. But it's also when in the evening, or say, with our two golfers here, uh, it, it functions as a training center where they come in to do their, their performance conditioning uh, under their, their coach. Do they have each have a specific program that they work through when they come in here? Yeah, they all would, they would all have, again, in coordination with the full team that looks at, after them from sports medicine to performance services. Mm -hmm you'll have an individual training plan coordinated by the coach and then the strength plan, the nutrition plan, the, the rehabilitation exercise they give will be all coordinated under the Sports Institute. Then it was time to meet a national rower as he worked out on the rowing ergometer. How, how uh, realistic does this feel, my man, in terms of from the actual rowing experience? Um, it gets quite a good feel with the signers on. Um, we need the, the idea of having sliders instead of having right. a machine stationary stuff that um, we get a closer stroke rate as to what we do on the water. Okay. Yeah. So um, in terms of feel, it's not, nothing beats being on the water, of course. So let me get, get on. I'm gonna see just how this feels. If it really has a. And um, well, I mean, do you have spare lycra for him? No, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need lycra. Don't need lycra. Okay. Any any advice for him? Yeah. So basically rowing is a very lower body dominant sport. So what you gotta do when it goes to the catch, you gotta use the legs. Yes, yeah, so what you do is push the legs first. Push the legs first. Before you pull through the hands. So keep the hands straight Step or you right. catch. Okay, so okay. Push, yeah. This is what we call the catch position. Pretty much the start of the stroke. So you push your legs for the correct body, then you pull the hands. Right. And so when it finishes, you straighten the hands first. No, your body stays in the back. Body comes forward. Okay. Then you bend your legs. Oh, yeah. so I it's see. all in the reverse. So whoever starts first at the stroke, then your hands and your body correct. Yeah. It wasn't as easy when I had to do it with the proper technique, but once I got into the groove, I was drawing away. And then I realized. Okay. <laughs> yes. Maybe you do need to be in Lycra for this. <laughs> <laughs> So what just happened? What was happening here? Well, Amir was just doing a few counter movement jumps. Okay, so he's actually wrecking the plate on his back. 
right, jumping as fast and as high as you can. Uh -huh. And so the figures on the screen actually show the power output of each jump. So I actually set a threshold for it, so he said to aim to jump about 900 watts. So is this based on his ability? His own ability. His own, uh, so it's different for everyone? It's different for everyone, yeah. But the whole idea is he's basically got weights on him and he's yeah. trying to jump higher and yeah. that's strengthening the... Strengthening the lower body power. I see, I see. Okay, can, will I be able to try? Yeah, you can. Yeah? I probably can't take out you gotta, <laughs> you made me look bad. So take out the weights altogether? I mean, uh, for safety reasons. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. For safety reasons, we should take out the weights. Okay. So there was jumping away, and once again, it looks a lot easier when someone else is doing it. So I stepped aside to allow the real athlete to show us just how it's done. So we've just seen the power cage in action, but let me ask you now, for these guys, how much of it is talent and how much of it's pure hard work? So can a, a guy who just likes to swim become a professional swimmer? Um, it's always a, it's a combination of everything. You do need talent. The question is finding which sport you're suited to. So everyone has a talent, but someone who can't swim with no natural talent will find it very hard to become mm -hmm. an elite level swimmer. Uh, hard work. You will never get success without the hard training, the hard hours spent in training. What you see today is trying to give you that 1% extra that tries to get you maybe from a fifth place to a bronze medal or from a bronze medal to a gold medal. It's about that tiny difference over your competitor. But there's no point in having all this great equipment if the athletes aren't training and training hard and train, training scientifically. Well, I've done a bit of hard work today. I've yeah. a mini workout. I, I see there's some therapists who kind of do there a, are. a um, massage. It's a deep tissue sports massage. Yeah. Followed by a hot cold. I think I brought my own oil in my bag. Uh, no, <laughs> no. Oil. no, no. It's a deep tissue massage. You'll enjoy it. Um, th I've enjoyed this tour today. Yeah, thank you. There's one restricted area that I won't be able to show you. It's okay. where we're you know, doing a lot of uh, very specific interventions to get an edge over our competitors. Uh -huh. So we might bring you back after Olympics in London two years time to show you what we've been doing, but I for today, we, we can't show you okay. that, no. It's still in the uh, testing experimental secret yes, phase. It is, yeah. We, yeah. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. It's okay, I'll set off with the massage. Okay, that's good. All right, Let's thanks go for well, if you, uh, any of you young ones out there have aspirations of being an athlete, you can always visit one of their 26 satellite centers for sports development. And it's targeted especially for those aged 6 to 16. And these centers will help identify sporting talent at an early age. Uh, that's right. I think they've decided, you know, it'd be a good avenue for them to train, you know, for all those who are young and interested in budding mm -hmm. athletes to go and try. And they'll have people kind of like scouts yeah. on the lookout to, to earmark those uh, young people. So if you want, you can make a visit to one of those uh, sports centers now the sports range from basketball to standing even wrestling among others yeah, well I do believe some of us are born with that talent but yeah. sometimes it's also nurture as well so if you are interested in the sport you can also go just check it out for fun to find out more you can visit this website it's uh, Singapore sports dot sg yeah just look up there for the satellite centers it's on the website and you can uh, m there are several about town in singapore so make a visit there mm. well on that note we're going to wrap up prime time morning for this tuesday the 17th of august but of course we're back tomorrow with another exciting show that's right don't miss it we've got uh, we'll be interviewing some guest judges on the one moment of glory reality mm. tv competition that's happening right here in singapore i know i haven't catched the, what the first episode so good fun lots of people yeah. coming out to do all sorts of different things it's any kind of talent. our version of britain's got talent yeah, america's got right. talent so it's pretty fun Meantime, the news continues right here on Channel News Asia. Have yourself a good one. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.